apparently. Oh, so he becomes like, you know, Dr. Oz. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I kind of get that way. I kind of turn into, we always have Dr. like heart Phil. to hearts with everybody. Yeah, I think it's I Dr. Like. Phil, not uh-huh. Dr. Oz. I don't think people yeah. are saying, a hey, plastic does surgeon? this look infected? <laughs> and they're actually saying, I can't believe I broke up with my boyfriend. Yeah. Well, that's what I am. I turn into a doctor when I do. Hey, what's up? I'm Zach from the Woody and Jim Show on 107.5 The River. I got suckered into this little black hole of a crazy business. Because I actually started out in modeling, so I did childhood modeling for like Old Navy catalogs, and then my latest one, I did a worldwide Abercrombie & Fitch modeling campaign. So my job title is producer, but I literally do everything for the entire show, including the pre-show, the I work during the show, I do the after show, and I also spread my joyous laughter on air. So I get up at like 3 a.m. every day so I can get up and look at all the news outlets, look at all of our different prep services and like TMZ and all the different celebrity gossip sources that we have so that we have relevant things to talk about. People care about what's going on in Hollywood or what's going on in the news, what's trending on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. Viral videos are a really big thing right now, so we have to make sure that we get different audio for the viral videos. And then we link the audio to our website to get hits on the website for what they heard on air. So I just make sure that we have everything ready to go pre-show. And then I create a minute-to-minute schedule of what I want them to say and how I want them to say it and how I want the world to run. (laughs) What time we're supposed to hit commercial breaks and if we have like guests coming in studio, what time they're coming in and everything like that. And a description of the different prizes we're giving away so that they're very aware of what's going on every second of the day. We have a countdown that I put up right here of like how long they have for each topic and what's going on, seriously. A long time campaign. Uh, <laughs> it's the national Christmas parade tonight. We're gonna to be doing the play-by-play that'll be seen all during the month of December on Metro 3. Savannah, who is out sick, she was gonna be doing it with us, but um, she's not going to now. No, she's not. Because she hates you. <laughs> no, she's not. Obviously she is. We, we wish her a speedy recovery. She's Hopefully sick. she'll be back. I get here like 4.30 because the show starts at 5. And then the show during the show, I am running the social media for the show. I am writing all of their blogs. So Woody and Jim Savannah, they all have their own blog. I write the content for it. And then... <laughs> I write all the content for the blog, and I run the board for the show, I literally do whatever so they can see you be creative. Ed Sheeran's ex. After the show is over, come 10 o'clock, we have an after show meeting where I can get an idea of what's going on in their life, because I want to create content and topics that are relatable to people in their morning drive, their daily life, that... Just whatever's going on, I want them to feel relatable. And, like, I don't want them to feel like they're listeners. I want them to feel like they're friends, like they're in the studio, they're hanging out with us. They're part of our life. We're part of their life every day. They're part of our life every day. So the content and the topics that we come up with surround ourselves with, like, what people are doing in their regular lives. So I dig for content. I'm like, what are you doing? What's going on with your wife, your children, your husband? Like, what's happening in your life? I want to know these things so that I can create interesting things. And so each day we kind of have, like, Monday, we do like a music Monday, so we try and do everything related to the artist. Tuesday, we do like a relationship Tuesday, so what people can relate to like their relationship problems. Wednesday, we just, it's a free for all. We just, <laughs> we do like, usually we do like a ask me anything so that people feel like they can call in and ask whatever they want to know about us. 107.5 The River. After the show, then I also do the Ryan Seacrest show. So from Ryan Seacrest, you obviously know he's out in L.A. So him and Ellen K. track the show from 10 to 2 p.m. So everything is pre-recorded. They just send it over in an MP3 file and it's put into our computer system. And so I have to go through when he says like 107.5 The River, it's Ryan Seacrest. I have to pick that audio clip, match it with his audio clip that he sends us so that all of his cadence and his intonation matches so that it sounds extremely local because we don't want people to think that they're listening to la radio when they really are you you um <gasps> you i knew you're working hard to, to to be doing okay but uh so for example we we're talking about like over the weekends you'll you'll dart out and you're working this weekend you're you're going to a festival but you- started out as an intern on the show i was the little basset hound that would run around and like print out whatever they needed go get them food get them coffee like Make sure that the producer's job and their job was easier. So I kind of created a niche to make myself valuable. And then I got hired on as producer. So from like going from an intern to a producer of the number one morning show in Nashville, I'm just like, <gasps> what do I do? I'm kind of in charge of your life. What do I do now? <laughs> like, it's a scary thing to be 22. I'm still in college and I'm like, 
producer of these people that they're almost like to me they're iconic in the radio industry they've had the show for 17 years and still going strong i'm like what in the hell am i doing here <laughs> like i know nothing and so it's it's pretty it's a pretty daunting task to wake up every morning and know that i have to kind of rein these fools in and make make a good show out of what's going on in our lives and i'm also on air quite a bit so like even transferring from the role from producer to on air is I feel like I have to switch mindsets almost from this organized O C D person to make sure everything is like on time and perfect to this funny creative person that like connects, make sure we all have the same vibe and everything is clicking and we're all laughing and having a good time. So like transitioning from role to role is kind of scary, but you almost have to be an actor to do like turn on different switches and know your limits and your boundaries. You know what? I hope Brandy Clark wins. Just because this is her first year as like an artist. She was she's been a songwriter forever. She's written so many hits and so this is like her first album out as a big artist. So I hope she wins. The craziest part that has happened in my life because of my job is that literally for the past five months I've not got a single day without being recognized in public. So whenever we have like events or like I go to concerts and there's a lot of people that listen to the show, they're like, Zach, can I get a picture? I'm like Zach Efron is here? Like, who are you talking to? <laughs> like, why do you want a picture with me? I work in radio. I'm not Oprah. Like, <laughs> whoo, take a breather. <laughs> but it's, like, the most insane feeling ever to know, like, every morning when there's, like, just four of us hanging out here in the studio, I just feel like we're friends talking about life and we're just gallivanting around, like, <laughs> having fun doing whatever. So it's weird to think about, like, hundreds of thousands of people listen to what we're saying every morning. And so... Like, whenever we got in public, they'll ask me about things. I'm like, how you know about my sister? Like, it's crazy. But it's the most humbling and, like, grateful feeling ever. Whenever, I will never, ever, ever say no if people ask me for a picture. I was embarrassed because I was wearing a hat one day to the grocery store. And somebody asked me for a picture. I was like, okay, yeah, definitely. Let's take a picture. Praying that they would not post it on the internet. <laughs> because I'm embarrassed to wear a hat in public. But, like... I think that's what makes our show almost different than most shows is that the locality of us is that we're all here in Nashville and if you approach any of us in public, like it makes our day. Obviously we'll be there to take a picture, call you, whatever you want. Like, interaction with our listeners, not I don't even like to call my listeners, interaction with our friends is what makes sets our show apart is they feel like they're welcome and I created, when I became producer, I created this open door policy so that Whenever people are here, like, if they're around town, tweet us, come up, come hang out in the studio, meet us, do whatever you, like, let's take a picture, let's hang out, we have a couch, hang out, like, we have a coffee bar, like, whatever you want, just come hang out with us, it'll be fun, it'll be a party. I think I have a different idea of what it means to be in the entertainment industry. I think a lot of times people get into the entertainment industry as an idea of, I want the money, I want the fame, I want these, I want, I want, I want, I want, is what they say. For me, it's more of like, um more like I want to create, I want to give, I want to invent, I want to be this positive role model for people. When you're like a, oh, this I hate this word, a celebrity, it's like you have so much influence over so many people and you don't even know. Like I would think people take what they have for granted and so being my idea of a career in the media, media industry for me is I want to be able to create an outlet where people feel comfortable that they want to come talk to me about whatever their issues are. They want to be able to talk to me about what's ever going on in their life and they feel comfortable and safe. And I want to be this positive role model where people look up to me and like, oh, really, things do get better. Life is going to be okay. I can make it. I can do it. I was the same person. I was like, in high school, I was bullied. I suffered with depression, whatever. And I want to be the person that they feel the outlet where it's okay to come talk to. And like, you can make it through and you'll be okay. And life goes on. It is what it is. You can, for me, I sound so cheesy right now, but like, if it's, like, if you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. And so creating an outlet and a career and a role model, I just want to create this brand where almost it's like this global empire where we come together as not individuals, but as a community to create a better life for everybody. And so it's just a different idea and different take on how you humble yourself and take what you have instead of taking it for granted and freaking drinking and boozing your life away like the other young celebrities <laughs> in Hollywood. But she's, she's from Nashville. I gotta root for her, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say Sam Smith wins Record of the Year. Stay with me. Are you trying to win me over, Jim? No. <laughs> By no means. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're pretty innovative. We probably need you. Yeah, you do need me. 
<laughs> you do.